Great, thank you everyone for joining us for today's um, Autodesk Construction Cloud Deep Dive. Uh, we're going to be looking at the main products being Autodesk Docs, BIM Collaborate and then Collaborate Pro, as well as Autodesk Build in today's online event. First, I just want to run you through the agenda so that you know what to expect from today. We're going to do a quick open and welcome just so that you know who we have um, presenting today and if you're unfamiliar with Make Events. Uh, we'll just also give you a brief introduction to us as a company and what we believe in. Then we're going to have a look at uh, connected construction. What does it mean and how can these types of cloud technologies actually improve construction in the built environment? Next up, I think, is probably the part um, that's going to be most interesting and the part that uh, raised most questions before is uh, Autodesk BIM Collaborate and then also BIM Collaborate Pro. Uh, there's a detailed list of topics that we're going to go through regarding these two different products, what can they do, and then also what are the differences between the two. Then I'll be taking you through Autodesk Build, the main application for ones who also work in the field and the types of productivity gains and features and functions that you can expect from using Autodesk Build. And then um, in about an hour and a half, we'll bring us to a close and just also briefly go through if any of what you've seen today is interesting, how can you actually go ahead and take the next step? So if you are unfamiliar with Baker Baines or what we believe in and what we stand for, our main mission and goal is to solve our customers' problems through digital transformation, helping them to design and make a better world. And the reason why we're hosting this event today is because we believe that the technology that we will be presenting today can help you do just that. A lot of you might have heard the name Baker Baines before and you should be slightly familiar with us and I believe that's the reason why you are online and attending today with us. But there's actually three, or oh, sorry, four main components to um, Baker Baines. The first, and at least for me and my team, uh, probably the most important is at our core, we focus on um, doing business process improvement consulting. And this is done through our IADOC consulting methodology, which includes different types of assessments and implementation project assistance. We are also um, hold different authorizations in the Autodesk world to support our consulting methodology. Next, this is the nice and exciting piece. My colleague Shahab's not online with us today, but this is the part that he has uh, the most passion for, is our scan to film services. So our survey and design hardware. This is where we start using some nice fancy scanners, the Leica BLK360 to do some interior as well scanning and rental equipment. We've also partnered with Topcon to help in that space. Design software consultancy, I think that is the part that most people um, kind of think of when they think about Baker Baines. We are the second largest gold partner in South Africa and we manage well over 5,000 licenses, but we are also partnered with other types of technologies like IDAS and ClearEdge. And then what brings all of this together is really the fact that we focus on learning and being a blended learning provider. And that is also done through our online learning platform. And over the last past year, we've adopted and changed the way that we um, present events and bring training and learning to everyone through different mediums. Today's speakers are our panel of BIM ladies. Originally, we would have been four, four ladies, but um, Niran is celebrating E today. So the ladies that will take you through the content today um, is myself. I'm Yanni Pouyoun, I'm right on the left. I manage the professional services team. I do come from an interior design background, but recently I kind of found myself being uh, very involved in projects and information management on those projects. Then we have Jackie, who I'm going to hand over shortly. If you are one of our customers based in Cape Town, you probably would have met Jackie in person before. She heads up our BIM technology and takes care of all our key accounts um, in the Western Cape and then also some um, up in Harting. And Jackie and myself both also did a little bit of um, construction management training last year. And then last but certainly not least is um, Anin. Anin is our BIM specialist and also our resident architect um, who comes with a lot of actual industry experience. So when she goes through 
some of the BIM Collaborate and BIM Collaborate Pro features and functionalities, she knows the struggles that you really find if you're working on live projects. So this is our panel of BIM ladies for a construction event, which probably is quite rare, but um, we bring some diversity. Now, before we, we jump in, we'd just like to hear from you, and I'm going to ask um, I need to go and launch a poll. Um, I can see that she's um, about to go and do that. Um, if I can ask that everyone online just quickly goes and answers our poll. And then once we're done getting those poll results, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Jackie to take you through um, our connected construction and what does it mean and how can it help you. It seems, Johnny, like the majority of the votes is said no, but I would like to. So that's quite good to get to hear. Great, so that is good to hear. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, thanks, Anine. If we've got a couple of votes in, I mean, this is really a you know, fastest finger first click on your answer. You don't really have to think about it, but I think let's um, move over. And I'm going to hand over to Jackie. Give me a second. Let me go in here and. Give her the reins. Great. Checks. Hi. Jackie, I can see your screen. Over to you. Um, thank you. Just give me one secie. I seem to have lost one of my screens. There we go. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome sort some things out. So today I'm going to do an introduction um, of connected um, construction. Seem to have a problem with this little bar. There we go. It's not for, for a moment there. I thought it wasn't allowing me to uh, move slides. So let's have a look at construction and, and um, how big it is and what the challenges are that uh, people in today's day and age are are facing. Um, of course, one of the biggest are global trends, um, urbanization, industrialized construction, um, COVID. We all know how that impacted um, the industry in the past uh, year, 12 months, 16 months. Um, what opportunities has that created in the construction industry? Um, it's quite an exciting time for the construction industry, I would say. We see high growth rates, but with this comes a growth demands and business pressures are also higher than ever. Global trends such as increased urbanization result in high demand and increased work, but lack of skills places pressure on the industry to work faster and smarter. Besides these increasing pressures and demands, customers such as owners and subcontractors do face many challenges every day. Ineffective broken processes, lower margins, and the need for predictable outcomes. On top of that, many trends are directly impacting the construction outcomes today and shaping the industry for tomorrow. Going too far. No, we go. So let's have a look and talk about how the industry fragmentation directly impacts many construction outcomes. A typical construction project is based on multiple teams across all phases of the project life cycle. Owners and subcontractors all use different systems and platforms. Studies show that 25% of construction companies use at least five different or more software applications, which makes integration and communication harder and limits project data usage. Communication within a team can happen through various formats, including paper. In fact, more than 70% of global construction industry is still working from traditional paper-based processes. This issue has an added layer of complexity when we consider the communication between the different teams. This fragmentation of data has a huge and direct impact on the project outcomes across all levels of organizations. Teams are disconnected and working from outdated information. This is usually due to the use of multiple apps or even the complete lack of digital adoption, which leads to loads of wasted time and security issues due to unnecessary people being on the job site. On the project level, the disconnection between the office and the field accounts for massive avoidable rework, impacting project cost, quality, delivery time, and profitability. There's a massive impact at the business level as well. Unused and lost project data is usually reducing potential opportunities such as portfolio visibility. 
the construction industry urges for more connection from people to data, and technology plays a key role within this opportunity. My, oh, hold on, there we go. Okay. Um, sorry, I think I'm losing. So we look at a strategy which consists of three pillars. First, digitization. We're enabling the construction business for the digital age. It isn't just about moving of paper, although that is an essential first step. It's about digitizing processes so our customers can enhance the way information is shared through the connected devices. No matter where these teams are working, this enables faster and better decisions from a single source of truth. Next, workflow integration. We are bringing businesses, processes together and automating manual workflows across all construction phases. And finally, since we're bringing all this data together and capturing critical information, we enable our customers to optimize, leverage, enable, to improve their businesses. This way, they can automatically extract powerful insights and even predict a wide range of issues and risks before they actually happen. We optimize data usage so our customers can deliver projects profitably, safely, and on time. So we bring all this together in Autodesk Construction Cloud, we are, we, where we enable construction companies to forget the old days of highly fragmented um, industry and benefit from connected construction. This all comes together through the Autodesk Construction Cloud platform, technology that supports workflows spanning from design to plan, build, and operate. With data shared across these phases, connect, connected to inform decision-making across design and construction, as well as turnover for data, operations, and owners. The analysis of that data is identify, prioritize, and resolve problems earlier on in the life cycle. The connection to the partners that you need to build with confidence to choose the best partner for each and every job. This is connected construction. Let's take a look at how Autodesk Construction Cloud connects teams, workflows, and data. First, we bring teams and team members together, enabling easier collaboration from a single source of truth. Whether in the office or on the job site, every collaborator um, throughout use connected devices. Autodesk delivers capabilities to enhance collaboration through meaningful workflows for all phases of construction, from design authoring to facilities management, integrating workflows to enable construction teams to optimize desired outcomes and ensure business expansion. All of this is only possible through a strong connected foundation. With Autodesk Construction Cloud, shared data allows assertive decision making, and enables predictive insights. Documents are shared, so work happens from a single source of truth. All this gathered data enables construction teams to better deliver and even predict business outcomes. Autodesk's product development strategy has been to continue investments in all the products in their product portfolio to expand reach of this portfolio and to build meaningful integrations between those products that so that customers can carry out end-to-end -end workflow across products and ultimately the unification of these products and workflows. By delivering a unified platform where all features come together across the full digital building life cycle. Let's have a look at the evolution of the Autodesk Cloud Solutions. I'm sure everybody remembers BIM 360 team or most of you do. Um, we saw that trans that movement towards BIM 360 docs. A lot of us have worked on BIM 360 docs over the past four to five years. Um, since the launch of Autodesk Construction Cloud, we now see that as Autodesk docs. From a Collaborate for Revit perspective, we saw that move over to BIM 360 design. From an Autodesk Construction Cloud perspective, we're now seeing it as BIM Collaborate Pro. For clash detection, we had BIM 360 glue, which became BIM 360 coordinates, and now through ACC, 
we have BIM Collaborates. BIM 360 Field ultimately became BIM 360 Build. We now have Autodesk Build. And now over to Anin. Thank you, Jax. I'm just quickly going to change screens. Okay, there we go. Thanks, Anin. We can see your screen. Perfect. Okay, so thanks, Jax, and um, hello to everyone from our side. Um, now, this is the part where I'll be taking you through the how of the ACC platform, and the topics for the next section will be on BIM Collaborate and also BIM Collaborate Pro. Now, in terms of BIM Collaborate Pro, uh, what we will be discussing is a team setup, um, how to initiate your Revit cloud work sharing, and also publishing your models to the cloud. Then we will continue with change visualization and uh, the rest on BIM Collaborate, which is focused around model coordination. Now, just on issue management, I thought I will share a quick story. So my first encounter with BIM issues um, were actually in the middle of the night when I, I woke up of various email notifications telling me that there's several issues on a BIM project and I need to take action. And this was actually when I just started working at Baker Baines and it was my manager, Yanni, who was busy testing a project, yes, in the middle of the night, and also doing some things on issue management. So I just remember sitting there, not knowing what this is about, and also seriously having my doubts about this new job um, with all of its issues. So my first attempt to issue management wasn't that great. Okay, but then um, into our presentation. So we had a number of webinars where we spoke about the challenges um, that are present um, to the different degrees in architecture, um, engineer, and also the construction industries. And we also engage with our customers a lot. And the top challenges that we found is, is in improving efficiency. Um, um, also, it's very commonly rework, delays, and also miscommunication. Collaboration, communication, and coordination. Also referred to as uh, the three Cs, um, we know is essential for any business to be successful and also to maintain it. And today we will be showcasing you some of the features of the ACC platform and also how they are specifically designed um, to improve uh, collaboration and also coordination between all stakeho uh, stakeholders throughout the life cycle um, of a construction project. All the, all the while, while, while still um, maintaining transparent processes that streamlines communication, uh, particularly regarding changes and updates. Now, what is BIM Collaborate and BIM Collaborate Pro? So it's a platform for the entire project team. Now, if we consider the current state of companies uh, needing more flexibility for remote, anytime, anywhere work, um, being able to still use the design tools that they prefer certainly of great value. So with this platform, um, designers, which is architects, engineers, and also your other consultants, they can use it for design collaboration and also um, co-authoring on projects. Then the issue of having disconnected and, and non-integrated apps are also uh, addressed by BIM Collaborate and BIM Collaborate Pro. Um, offering a common data environment for users as a uniform, uh, a uniform platform to streamline data and workflows. Then also, not all of your decision makers, which is your company principals, um, project owners and clients, uh, need to necessarily have access to the authoring tools, such as uh, Revit, Civil 3D and Plant 3D, um, in order to, to view projects and also co-partner on uh, design reviews and give input on important uh, project decisions. So um, models, drawings and documents um, with this tool are accessible um, on any smart device, giving stakeholders a full insight of projects um, anytime from anywhere. Then just this slide just builds on the previous one, looking at what's included in the BIM Collaborate uh, package and also some key features of each tool. Now your Autodesk Docs is your foundation of the ACC platform and this provides users with um, unlimited storage uh, for a variety of file formats and also with uh, robust permission settings. 
You also have your automatic versioning and the ability to create issues and markups on documents. Then the design collaboration module, it gives users a high degree of control over how and also with whom uh, their project data is shared, as well as the unique ability to, to see all changes from version to version. And then the model co coordination uh, module provides uh, users with automated 3D class detection um, and also integrated coordination um, issue management tools. Then lastly, your BIM Collaborate Pro also includes Revit Cloud Work Sharing, allowing users to for real-time Revit work sharing uh, from virtually anywhere, um, even with modest uh, internet connectivity. Then this is just an overview of the ACC platform and also which product fits into what uh, stage of the project lifecycle, uh, starting on the left with your design phase, which is uh, which is what you use Autodesk BIM Collaborate for, and then right throughout to um, during construction and also project closeout. So I'll be starting with design collaboration, and from there on we will talk about coordination and also included with um, design collaboration is your Revit Cloud Work Sharing, which is part of BIM Collaborate Pro. And then Yanni will take you through Autodesk Build, which is typically used uh, during the construction phase. So this is just, uh, this slide just summarizes the intent of BIM Collaborate and also BIM Collaborate Pro, um, also with some illustrations. So basically what you see here is uh, the typical concept and detailed design phase um, during project engineering uh, with their respective disciplines um, who need to collaborate throughout the design process and um, sometimes during construction as well. And this might um, either be um, because of design development that sometimes overlaps with construction or due to new discoveries on site that requires design changes or it may uh, perhaps be due to um, regulatory or client changes that needs to be addressed. Good, so before I dive into the data, I wanna quickly launch another poll to get some feedback from you. Just briefly going to start this. Okay, so the question is, um, are you interested in switching to the ACC? Okay, so I can see some answers coming through. It seems actually like the majority uh, says that they are already an ACC user. So it's between the first, between A and B. Okay, good. Just close that one. Okay, so um, let's start with um, BIM Collaborate Pro. So how do you get started? Um, just to mention, if you do have an existing a subscription to BIM 360 Design, you will automatically have access to BIM Collaborate Pro. Now for new users, you need to purchase um, a BIM Collaborate Pro license. Then you need to uh, assign your access to Collaborate Pro, and this is typically done by the contract manager or your software um, coordinator. Then you do have to do your basic BIM 360 admin, which entails uh, setting up your projects, um, adding members to an account, also uh, setting up companies, roles, templates, and um, other settings. Then um, if you do want to, um, yeah, then you will continue adding um, projects and also doing the administration that is involved with that, like um, activating also your services. And you will see that once services have been activated, they will um, appear in the model picker in the dropdown. Then with Collaborate Pro, you also have your basic document management. Uh, we will look at this shortly. And once your basic setup has been done, you can start with your design collaboration, uh, which is during the design phase of your project. Then just briefly touching on the two uh, ACC or BIM 360 roles, uh, you have your account administrators who creates and activates the services. They add or remove members. Uh, they also assign project admins and assign additional account admins. 
Then you have your project admins uh, who can add or remove members to a project. They set the permissions and visibility and also adjust uh, the project details. Then uh, just if you want to create a new project, this is typically done by the account admin from the account admin module. And by clicking on create project, you will then need to specify or enter the project details and uh, the project uh, the account admin also needs to assign the project admins. And when your new project is created, the project admin will then add members to the, to the project. Um, and you will also need to activate the services. And this is obviously, um, this depends on the products that you've purchased. So for Collaborate Pro, you need to activate docs and also design collaboration. Then just looking at a quick a workflow of design collaboration. Now you will see that the three colors, they signify the various roles and also who's responsible for what. So you will start by creating your new project. And these first steps is what I just spoke about. Uh, also adding your project members and activating the necessary modules. Then um, inside of document management, you will set up your folders. You will add teams to the folders and also add um, members to the teams. Then if you want to make use of a uh, Revit Cloud work sharing, uh, you will need to um, initiate your Revit um, models for as central files and also save them to the cloud. And also apart from saving your models to the cloud, uh, you also need to publish uh, those models to the cloud so that other users who are not part of your team um, or non-Revit users can also see your latest model. Then if users want, they can uh, grab uh, drawings of the cloud and link it into their Revit models. Um, and also then um, once an updated model is, model is ready to be shared with other teams, they, um, a team can build a package and they can then share it with other teams. So um, once a, a, an updated model is shared, a team can review it, they can see all changes, decide whether they want to accept it or not. And if they are satisfied with that, they can then consume the package. And once that has been done, once again, link updated models back to their Revit models and essentially get the work done. Okay, so let's start by looking at the, your basic project setup um, with document management. So you typically start with your folder creation and the icon slightly changed, so it's now files, and this allows you to organize your project data into your uh, relevant folders. So um, you will see that on the new ACC platform, you've got um, like with the previous one, your two root folders, but the names slightly changed. It's now for the field and also uh, project files. Now um, for the field, uh, all project members can view folders and files that sits within these folders. Then um, it can be used to share files to everyone. And also files in this folder are synced uh, to the plan grid build mobile application as well. Then your project files um, can be used to organize files that aren't ready for the field. In other words, that are not yet ready for construction. And also permissions can be applied to the project files folder and also any subfolders um, to control access. Then this is just a quick demo of how you create your folders from your docs module, clicking on files. Um, here we can see our two root default folders. And if you want to start adding subfolders, say for instance, to project files, you will simply click those three dots and select um, add subfolder. And you will basically then just start adding the names of the folders. Okay, so I just want to put this on mute. And um, so what I did here is I created a main folder for each team, but obviously uh, your structure will be determined by your project and also um, what uh, template you want to use. So you can also add some more subfolders uh, to a team's folder. If you want to, for instance, uh, sort your drawings in specific file types, um, et cetera. And your folder structure is obviously something that you also build on as your project progresses. Then um, once your project has been set up, uh, you will also add your project uh, team members. 
So your project admin does so from the members tab. He selects add members, and then you will need to add the details such as um, email addresses, contact information, roles, um, permissions, etc. And once that has been done, we, you will start adding your teams and also assigning their permissions. So just looking at this quickly in action. Um, so to set up your teams, you will do so from the design collaboration module. So going to design collaboration settings, uh, you will select add team. And if it's the first time that you're starting to add teams, it will give you this pop-up. And also important, you need to uh, select a shared folder location where files will be automatically um, stored once a, a package has been shared. So a good option is to make use of the default location, which sits under project files. And once you've selected it, you can just say continue. And then you can start adding your teams. So if you do have uh, existing folders, you can select that. So you will remember in the previous uh, video, I created my various folders for the different teams. So that's quite nice. Then it automatically picks up uh, the folders name and add that as a team name. Um, but if you wanted to add a new team, you can also do that by entering a team name and adding them. So you will repeat this process for um, all of your teams. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward this one a little bit. Okay, so once you've added all of your teams, you can just close it and you then can see um, the various teams with a color coding as well. So next step is to add your the members to the teams. So um, also, if you wanted to, for instance, change the color of the team, you can just click on the node and change the color. And then you will see the number of members. Um, if you want to add a new one, you will add the person's name. And just obviously, they need to be added to the project as well. And also sign their uh, permission. Uh, this info button just shows you an overview of the various permission levels. And so, for instance, we wanted to give Shuhaib only editing permissions. We will set it accordingly. We will add him. And also from this dialog is where you can typically remove uh, team members if you want to. Just giving this one time to finish. So clicking on remove, you can remove them. And you can also see that the number updated. Then going over to uh, your Revit Cloud work sharing. Now this, uh, this allows you to create a work sharing environment um, in the ICC. And it also um, allows for centralizing of all of your project design, design data. Okay, so step one, if you want to start collaborating on a project and you want to use a Revit Cloud work sharing, um, is to initiate your Revit model uh, for work sharing and also share it to the cloud. Um, so let's just look at a quick demo. So inside of your Revit, like with a normal uh, central file setup, you will go to collaborate you will select collaborate, but this time you will rather select in BIM uh, 360 document management. Then you need to select your relevant account and also uh, the project that has been created and you will navigate to your Teams um, folder. And then say initiate. And this will start your work sharing process. Okay, so you will just need to wait for it to give you all of the green bars once it's complete, and then you will know it has been successfully saved. Uh, that's just a snip showing what it looks like if it's done. And um, then uh, jumping to the ACC platform, once your model has been saved to the cloud, this is more or less what it looks like. And you can also see your version number. And if you click on that, uh, you can see your version history and also what is your current model. Um, if you wanted to make another model, a current model, you can just uh, click on make current. 
Then similar to syncing um, in a normal worksheet project, which is with the central file on a, on a network or a local network, um, you need to, after you've um, made any changes, you always need to synchronize your changes. So it works much the same as um, your normal synchronization. So you will click on synchronize and I select the modify settings option. And this is because if you want to add some um, comments, you can also do so. Okay, so if you've synced your changes, then obviously anyone in your team using Revit uh, can access that cloud model and also see um, the most up-to-date changes. Then what you can also do um, from Revit is you can define publishing settings. Um, say for instance, you wanted to create a set of model views and uh, sheets that you want to share with other disciplines, you can create sets for that. Um, this is more or less like Revit's uh, plotting process. And you can also, if you've got multiple sets, also um, set them to be published as well. So um, just looking at this in action from your Collaborate tab, you will go to Publish Settings. Here we can see at the top is existing sets that, that were created. And you can also filter what you see in that list um, in order to include certain uh, information in a set. Um, if you wanted to create a new set, you will just click on the new button and start entering a name for that. And so, for instance, you didn't want to include other sets, you will simply just untick them and tick your, your set that you want to publish. Also, then select what you want to include in the set. And uh, then you need to save and close it. And also important, once you've changed anything, you need to synchronize again. So your other option of synchronizing is if you simply click on your synchronize with uh, central tab, it will accept the default option, which is it doesn't open uh, this dialog where you can add comments and things like that. Great. Then very important is although you've um, shared your model to the cloud and you've synchronized changes, um, you will need to publish your model to the cloud as well. And that is because you want other users that's outside of your team and also non-Revit users to be able to see your latest um, model. Uh, so to publish your model, you will go to collaborate and then manage cloud uh, models. and you will select your relevant project. And here we can see a list of the current projects that is worksheet to the cloud. Uh, other actions, you can select to, to publish all of them. If we uh, hover over these um, various models, you can see which ones have been published. You can also view your different versions. So here we can see the latest one that sits on the cloud is, is version 5. And uh, remember, we now make changes, so this one needs to be published as well. So we'll, you, will, you will see the icon looks a bit different. I've got the option of publishing it. And if you're done publishing, your the bar, the status bar will change to green. Then also, if you want to create an aggregated model um, of the, inside of your Revit model, that, that is now if you want to combine the other uh, disciplines, Revit models into yours, you can also do it uh, via linking. So this works very uh, similar to normal linking. You will go to insert, uh, select link Revit, See, this one takes a little bit of time to load. Then you will see in your left hand side, it says it links from an external source and you will go to that specific Teams folder that you want to grab the model from, set your positioning and then select open.
This is just showing that there are other links that are nested into that structural model. And then from your manage links uh, dialog, you can see which links have been loaded and also the path time. You can see that it's from the cloud. Then uh, stepping off from Revit uh, cloud collaboration, or rather work sharing, um, we will next look at design collaboration in action on the ACC platform. Um, so when, you, when we talk about collaboration um, in BIM 360 or ACC, um, you will hear a lot about uh, creating, sharing, and also consuming packages. And this is basically a method of linking your Revit models. So just to show you the basic interface of uh, the design collaboration module, um, inside of this module, uh, each team has a space where they can, mod where they can um, share, they can review each other's models, they can review changes, they can create issues, and they can also uh, consume other teams' models. So the team space is really a powerful tool uh, for those familiar or not familiar with Revit. So if you want to access your team space, you will go to your uh, design collaboration uh, module. And from your home page, you can see the selected teams uh, dashboard. Also, uh, the model contents, what sheet has been shared in, inside of a set, and also the 3D views, and also the update dates. And if you wanted to update uh, the team space with the latest content, you can click update to latest. Or, and you can also schedule regular publishing. If you wanted to receive email notifications when uh, packages are shared and consumed, you can switch it on and clicking on project model takes you to the, to the um, project model. Then if we expand those three dots, we can see the entire team space with each team and their color code and also the timeline, which is uh, what they call swim lanes and each side of uh, each swim lane, you will see various nodes that means different things. Uh, for instance, on the MEP, we can see there that it's an empty circle, meaning that they've shared a package. Um, whereas on the structure, it's a solid circle, so that means a package has been uh, consumed. And for the architects, we can see that there's a two. It means that multiple nodes sit on top of each other. Um, that one says it's a shared package, and if we click on the square, it will take us to uh, the project model as well. And yeah, so from here you can navigate your model. You can see things like phases, um, also see various levels. If you click on a level, it creates like a, a 3D section. You can also, from your content browser, see what, what has been included in a set. Uh, click on your, or open up various sheets to view them. And change visualization, we will get to later. And then if we go back to your team view, you will see that eye icon, and this shows your aggregated model. So you can switch on and off another team's model, and you can also, if you want to distinguish between the two, um, select your colors. Right, so um, sharing of packages. Now, once the team has um, published and updated the model to the ICC, uh, what they can do is they can compile a package of model information and also updates that they want to share with other teams. Uh, what other teams can then do is they can explore uh, the model, see the changes, and decide whether they want to accept it or not. Uh, accepting is also referred to as consuming um, in ACC terms. So um, it really gives teams the ability to control what they share with other teams uh, and so. So let's, looking at this in action, if a team, say for, the, for instance, the architect wants to create a new package, you will click on the plus icon, then you will need to um, include what uh, sets and information he wants to include uh, with that package. If he wants to add documents, he can also do so. And then you will save. And once that is done, you will select share. And this is where you can uh, enter a package name and also a description. Just notice on the left there, next to architectural, um, the icon is, uh, is empty, meaning that it's a, a package in the process of being shared.
Okay, so now we can also see that that node changed to a solid, meaning a package uh, has been shared, and it's also updated on uh, the timeline as well. Then if you've set your email notifications to, sh uh, to receive uh, an email that a package has been shared, this is typically what it looks like. And if you click on view package, it will take you to, um, to the cloud to, to review that package. Then if teams want to explore a shared package, they can either do so by um, selecting the icon or the node on the timeline of another team's uh, swim lane, or alternatively, you can, like we saw in the previous um, uh, slide, you can click on view package. So this is what we will see in the next video. So just notice here that um, the node next to structure is still empty. Let's just start this one. There we go. So we can see here that uh, a new updated model by structural was shared. Also, the package description. Uh, content that's included, also the model, and then you can go and explore it by clicking on explore. So show changes once again will show changes between uh, various uh, versions of the model. It's going to fast forward this one a bit. And then once again, in your team's view, you can switch on uh, the other team's models, like your, if you know the architect looking at this, uh, switch on your model and also uh, switch on colors to differentiate. Okay, so when the architect is now happy and satisfied with the model, he doesn't have any objections and he wants to accept uh, the structural's updated model, he can do so by consuming the package. Now, let's just look at this in action. So the architect will go and he can click on the structures um, node or he can say consume from this dashboard or whilst in explore mode, um, just click on consume. So what this will do then is it means he accepts the model and it will actually uh, bring that updated model in, into his team space. We can also see that the nodes change to solid. So it means that this package has been consumed. Also, it updates on, this, on the timeline as well. And if we jump back to docs and also um, open the architects uh, respective team folders. Let's see, there we go. We can see that automatically a consumed folder has been created for structure and this now shows the updated uh, structural model in our team space and we can then take this model and link it back to our Revit model again and obviously you can do this for all of the other uh, teams packages. Okay, so I will then hand over to Yoni to continue with a change visualization. Thanks, Ani. Okay, and then have you given me share rights? Yes, I'm quickly doing that. There, there you go. go. Ah, see it now. Show my screen. There you go. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, okay, so we can still see your. PowerPoint. Slide show it now. There yes. you go. Cool. Great. Okay. So this is probably one of my favorite features <laughs> um, change visualization, um, which Aline spoke about because there's you know so many versions going up and down and packages and um, published models and things like that before you consume it or basically before you accept it and go, sure, fine, I want to use this one. Um, these different types of change visualization that can happen. And for me, what's quite nice about this change visualization is um, I'm looking at this model and I don't need to be a Revit user to look at this model. I can go into first person mode on the entry um, on the first floor and move through my model. Now it takes a little bit um, of time to load. There's a lot of things in this model. And from a coordination point of view, you can also go and color code things. It becomes a bit easier if you color code things because then it's clearer to see 
oh, this is in the MEP model, um, this is in the structure model. And I typically find that, you know, in every project, you do have a lot of people who want to see what's going on in the model, but they don't necessarily have access to Revit or need access to Revit. And with all of your elements in this model, you can also see the properties. So if I go and click on this column, I can go and see all of the properties on that column um, online. Then to just go into a little bit more detail about this change visualization, is there are a couple of different um, things that you can go and do. Sorry, I just want to move this over to my other slide. There you go. Okay. Okay, so there's three categories. Firstly, in if you are comparing two different versions of models that's being uploaded, things in green will show what has been added. And you can see this both in the 3D view as well as in um, drawings or in plan view. So here I can see green, great, someone's added it all. But you can also see things in red that has been removed. So here's uh, what looks like a little bit of a lamp that someone has um, has removed, or alternatively, you can see things that has been modified. Now, modified could either mean it's moved position, or it could also mean that the properties to a specific element um, has moved. So when you get these new versions and you want to go and explore it before you go and consume it, you can quickly go and check what has been added, removed, um, as well as then modified. Furthermore, in your change visualization, when you are exploring packages, like Alin had mentioned now, in my mind, if I think about, you know, what is a package, typically what I see, and I don't know why it's always Friday, but it seems like Friday is always the day where new models need to be uploaded on Friday. I guess so that it's there and it's ready for the team on Monday. That's the type of thing that if we say a package, and um, that's, you know, that upload your model on Friday type of thing. So you can compare um, the changes when you're reviewing these different packages. So if I'm the architect and I have a new model coming from Structure, I can go and explore um, those changes. These changes can be between um, different linked models uh, and you can filter it by discipline. So in, in a lot of our demonstrations and you see the Autodesk examples that just use an NEP model, we know that in real life, you won't have an MEP model, you'll have five different models that are all the different building services, but you can go and filter by discipline. You can see what's new in structure, what's new in electrical, um, in plumbing and construction uh, and architecture and so forth. Also, you can filter it by the modification type, so you can see whether, um, again, it's been added, it's been removed, is the geometry that's been changed, or is it an attribute or a property that has been changed. Search and filter for different types of things. So if you get a new um, structural model, you're probably mostly concerned by, you know, where did this change structural grids? Or if you um, are in the MEP side or the building services side and you get a new architectural model, you might want to know, did they actually change the service space that I have to work with? So you can go and search and filter for specific elements to see um, if that has been changed. Then something which I find very, very useful um, are watched groups. So for me, watched groups, uh, the first time I came across this, I kind of like to relate it back to something um, that I'm already familiar with. So if you are a Revit user and you're familiar with the, the um, copy monitor function, so copy monitor goes, there's a specific element in a model that I want to monitor. In other words, I'm not too concerned about other things changing, but a certain set of things I'm quite concerned about getting updates if that's changed because I know that it will affect my work. So in specific models um, or items, you can add them to watch groups. So structural grids, probably um, a, a good example. And you can quickly explore what has changed in this group of elements that I want to watch and have updates for. So these watch groups can be created um, by any teams and any team members. Um, but only if you are a project admin can you see all the watch groups. So if I'm only a project user and Anin is only a project user and Anin creates a watch group, I won't necessarily see her watch group, I'll only see my own, but project admins can then go and rename and delete and kind of see any type um, of watch groups. So this just makes it easier because if you just go compare between two different versions, you might see that there's you know, a thousand things added and modified, whereas only a handful of things um, would actually be of your concern and would affect the model and the work that you are doing in your discipline. So that kind of 
uh, we, we split this up into BIM Collaborate Pro was the first part and then BIM Collaborate was the second part. Now, as I mean showed earlier, BIM Collaborate Pro actually builds on BIM Collaborate, but just in terms of the workflow, we figured, you know, you will probably start with your Revit work sharing and get some models online before you'll start coordinating. So that's why we had flipped the two um, around. But everything that I'm showing you now is also part of BIM Collaborate Pro, which I mean had just shown. So when we start with our model coordination, like what I mean has mentioned previously, you need to go and activate that service. Now, some people might find this a little bit tricky because the service that you activate isn't the same name as the product. The product might have multiple different services. So when you start, you'll see at your top um, module selector, you'll need to go and actually activate model coordination. So here I've got um, Miran, our structural engineer, she's been selected. I can see the details and I need to go and tick the box to go, yes, I want model coordination and docs to be activated. In other words, I want her um, to have access to those modules. Next, let's actually look at the model coordination. So similar um, workflow to what Hanin had shown before, it's color coded, so project admin, typically what a manager would do, manager would do and then picking just a normal project member. So first off, you'll need to create your coordination space. Once you've created your coordination space, you'll need to upload models to that coordination space. And if we say upload models, I'm not talking about brand new models. This is just basically on your docs platform where all of your information sits, selecting the models that you want to use in this coordination space. Then we can go and view our models and our clashes. And this is um, a lot easier than one might think. And also, if you're a Navisworks user, um, this clash detection is pretty straightforward. When you view your models and your clashes, you have basically two options when you do that coordination, is either you can mark something as not an issue, or you can go and create an issue. Obviously, if there's an issue and that issue is then assigned to you, you'll want to go and view that issue. You'll want to make sure that you address that issue, aka resolve the clashes. Um, you can then go and mark that as resolved and you can review the changes. And ultimately, go and close your issue. So this is kind of a, the coordination um, workflow. If that issue wasn't really closed and if it didn't, um, if it didn't solve the problem. Also, what we've seen before in coordination is, um, and, and I had this on a project where there was a coordination issue between electrical um, and mechanical, and there was an issue, and this issue wasn't specifically assigned to anyone. So imagine this clash, and they were both looking at these two different disciplines saying, oh, we clash, and they both just moved a little bit dark, which means they went to go and resolve the clash, but they both kind of performed the same action, so they just had the same issue. Uh, if you assign this to the correct person, you shouldn't have that um, type of problem, but we know in some cases we do need to go and reopen an issue. If you reopen an issue, then obviously you go back to um, a few steps back in this specific workflow. Right, so let's start off by looking at creating your coordination spaces. Now, the way that you create your coordination spaces, as soon as you go and click on model coordinate settings is the first thing that will pop up. Now, this coordination space, I'm going to start with creating one coordination space, which is architecture versus structure. And I'll go and look for my models. Now, the models that I pick up here is the same models that were shared as packages in what I mean had just shown. I could also go and create another coordination space, which is called architecture versus structure versus MVP basically coordinating everything in one go. Um, if you have quite um, complicated models, I'd probably suggest that you break it down into smaller pieces. Just to, before, before we go into the next um, point around this, in your coordination spaces, when you go and select those models, those models or those packages are the same types of things that you would typically share on a Friday. This does not speak to your Revit work shared model. In other words, I'm not selecting the model that is actively being used on by the architectural team. I'm selecting the model that they decide to publish and share on a Friday. And you'll see why that is um, important. Then once you've created your coordination um, groups, you need to go and create your coordination views. Now, if you're familiar with Navisworks, you'll understand that there are certain views that makes it easier for you. So I go to my models and I say, okay, I want to look at my space structure versus mechanical. I select the models, the structure model, the MP model, 
and I'm go into this this viewing mode. So here I can see both of my both of my models in this view. I've got my panning, first person measure properties, um, all of that jazz down here. And I probably want to go and do a little drop in a little bit of a section in here, so that just makes it easier for me to actually see those services. So that when we do the cache detection, we don't need to go and look for these problems. The view is set up in a way so that it's quite easy to see. So if I select a component, again, I can go to the properties. Great, this is a duct. Um, so this view makes sense. You can also go and turn things on and off. So if you were, you know, doing this cache detection, but you're making mostly only looking at caches with ducts, you can go and turn off other MEP elements. Save that view. So MEP versus structural. This is the MEP versus structural for internal um, coordination. So when we do this coordination, we've got a view that's kind of set up for it. Again, I can go into another coordination space, so um, architecture versus structural. I select my structural model, I select my architecture model, and again, I can go and set up that view. So same type of functionality. I'm also going to go and drop in the section here and just rotate it a little bit so that we can get a better sense of that service space and where we might typically find things caching. Now, these views you can edit, you can have more than one, but a um, good place to start. Look at the properties, great, that's part of our um, part of our ceiling in there. I can go and save this view and say, okay, this view is for our architecture versus structural coordination space, and we look at our architectural versus structural for our internal um, coordination, and I can go and save that. Um, you can do this view for all of your different coordination um, spaces. So if you want the one that's got um, MEP and structure and everything in, but the views just help you to work through all of those clashes. So these are the first kind of two steps that you need to do to get started with coordination. Next up, let's have a look at clash detection. Like for me, this is like this is the, the star of the show when it comes to uh, BIM Collaborate. Now, once you've set up that um, coordination space and those coordination views, and you've told uh, you've told the construction cloud platform this is where you need to go and look for models, and you go to your clashes space, you will automatically see, hey, there's a bunch of clashes. You don't need to click on things and run things; it does it automatically for you. So, in this coordination matrix, uh, it is quite simple because we basically just have. MEP structure and architecture. It's not subdivided in any kind of way. So here we can see um, these, these codes might be confusing to you, but if you have a specific naming standard, that would make sense. I know SS is structure um, and MEP and so forth. So here we can see um, if I look at my MEP model um, top lane and I go right, uh, right to the right, we've got 4,821 clashes between my MEP model and my architecture model. Probably makes sense with a thing typically um, if you had to group MEP in one and run a catch, that is something that you will find. Again, this is that shared model package. These clashes don't update every time someone hits sync to central. These clashes update once the architecture team decide, okay, it's Friday afternoon, we need to share um, our package for everyone to coordinate um, on next week. Now we know obviously, you know, you won't just have three Revit models and it's not just quite as straightforward as having architecture structure MEP. As these models build and as you start breaking up your, your Revit project to make it more manageable, you might have things like an analytical model, a still detailing model, you know, wet services, data model, facade model, the list goes on. Um, it'll start running those caches more and more. So you'll see the number of caches get smaller because now we're running different models and the models have been broken up a little bit. So here, for example, if we have a look at steel de detailing and let's have a look at steel detailing um, versus some of our architectural caches, okay, 188, that becomes um, a you know, a more reasonable amount to work with. And I do think it's good practice to build your clash detection matrix so that it looks at smaller components to make this easier for you. 
Again here, you can also go and select view, so structure versus MEP, this is what we're looking at here, or you can go, I'm looking at architecture versus MEP, or ideally you would go, I'm looking at structure versus electrical, or structure versus mechanical, and break it up like that. Now, with your clash detection, uh, again, like I had mentioned, BIM 360, no, not BIM 360, see, I still even get confused between the new, um, the new names, so BIM, uh, collaborate will automatically detect clash detections uh, when new models are published. You can go and group these clashes by object, by object or type of system. And the reason why, because obviously a lot of the times we find that there is a clash between a duct and a whole bunch um, of beams, and technically that's one clash because it's one continuous um, running duct, and we know that if it's just dropped by um, a couple of millimeters, we won't have that. And it might pick it up as four clashes where actually it's just one. So you can go and group that. You can assign coordination issues to this. Uh, I think a lot of you are familiar. If you have used BIM 360 before, you might be familiar with using issues. But in this case, you can go and pinpoint an issue to an exact clash, and people will know exactly you know which components you are referring to. Also important to note that this is actually not just for Revit files. If you have 3D DWG, if you have IS, um, IFC, ARCHICAD, uh, Tecla structures, a lot of 3D models can be used um, in this space to go and run that clash detection. Obviously, these models all need to have the same coordinate system. You can't have one model kind of sitting there and one model sitting there and then trying to run a clash detection. Now let's have a look at issues and we've spoken each, you'll see each kind of component. When we talk about BIM Collaborate Pro, we'll talk about issues. When we talk about Autodesk Docs, we'll talk about issues. When I get into, onto Autodesk Build, I'm going to talk about issues again because <laughs> the, the idea of this platform is to solve issues and make it easier for you. Now from an issue management point of view, specifically when it comes to caches, you can mark something as not an issue. If you are, again, if you're a Navisworks user, you'll find that oh, it's wonderful, it picks up all of these clashes, but not everything that's a clash is necessarily an issue. Penetration is probably a good example. And um, up to a thousand clashes can be selected at one time, so you don't have to go and, you know, each one go mark not as an issue, each one assigned to a person. You can select a whole bunch of clashes and bulk and um, not an issue or bulk assignment. If issues were marked as not an issue, it can be reactivated to be a problem. So let's go, oh, penetration, not an issue. And then later we go, actually, no, it can't be a penetration because you're hitting me mark. Uh, you can't go and reactivate it again. Again, with this, keep in mind that everything is very controlled in terms of permissions. So not just anyone on the project can go and select, oh, this is not an issue, this is not an issue. You need to actually have the relevant permissions to go and do so. So good example here, um, sleeves to be cast in slab, it's a valid interface or, or a valid penetration. So we're marking that as not being an issue. Now, here's an example of that. We're looking at a, a structure model versus an MEP model, and we see there's a whole bunch of pipes that it's actually going through the slab. Um, Green is your primary model, red is your secondary model, the two little models that you're looking at. And I can go and select all of those and actually say, this is not an issue. Uh, these sleeves, they, we just need sleeves in the slab. It's a valid interface or, or valid penetration. Uh, structural engineer advised me to use valid interface, not valid penetration. So I'm going to take Niran's word for it. And you can just go and add comments, you know, sleeves needs to be um, cast in the slab for these stack pipes, uh, not an issue. Um, and then that will then be updated in that clash detection uh, matrix. And if models are updated again, we won't see that reoccurring issue. We've now told the system that these specific pipes um, actually just get a sleeve um, in the slab and it's not really an issue or a problem. Then let's just have a look at creating issues now. Creating issues, you can, and in this example, you might be the contractor and you've got all of your sheets, it's been published to you, I'll show you that in a little bit, and now I'm looking at my model because I want to raise an issue because we've had some problems um, on the site. I can go and click on my issue and say, okay, uh, there's, a, there's a problem here. Um, change the title to give it a better title and say, actually, you know, we found um, existing services running along and this is going to be a problem for us. Give it a description existing services found um, during excavation, so we need to address something, um, please advise. 
Now, you might think that this might be an RFI, and I'll show you in a bit how RFIs and issues can have a bi-directional link. Go and give it the location details so that we know exactly which, um, which column we are referring to. Again, assign it to a person, a role, or a company. Give it a root cause, in this case, it's probably constructability, um, as well as then a date. We'll touch on that ad references in a little bit. Might find another um, another issue here, so probably just more of a, a general issue. Um, not really designed, but um, it's not quite sure how how this walkway bridge will actually connect. So we might need to go, you know, what's the connection details in here? Um, will this be precast? Will this be in situ? Go and put in that description, and then um, again. Once you put in that detailed description, you can go and assign it. So I'm assigning this back to Neuron. Uh, she's a structural engineer. She needs to tell Bob the Builder what is what is going on here. Give it a date um, when I want this ideally to be solved. And like I've mentioned before, um, probably a constructability issue. Um, and you can go and link references to this, which I'll show you in a little while. Then when it comes to reviewing issues, so here you'll see all the different issue types. Um, again, issues have permission settings as to everything else. In BIM 360 and in ACC, so you might be uh, quite familiar with that. Uh, you can see who it's assigned to, who it was created by. You can also go and filter it. If you are a BIM 360 user and you're looking at this going, you know, it kind of all looks the same. Um, I think the filter functionality has uh, changed and improved quite a bit. And then also the fact that issues can now be a little bit smarter by linking to other types of, um, of elements and workflows in your project. So here we can go and filter um, by different issues. So perhaps I only want to see everything that has been assigned to Neuron so that she knows where she needs to go and focus. Now, how would we go about closing an issue? So let's go and have a look. There is that issue that Bob the Builder, Bob the Builder assigned to Neuron saying, listen, I found some services on site. I'm going to have a problem with this foundation. So she can go and give her comments in here to go, actually, you know, um, we need to offset the foundation to miss the existing services. And, um, you know, she probably would have uploaded this in a model as well. And that's why she's closing it. So she's not giving like a contract instruction, but she's actually saying, um, I have updated this on the model. You can also go and then link that updated model so that they know which reference we are talking to. Um, type it in here going, look, okay, updated in the model, um, see version nine, for example, um, and link that model in there so that we know that case, well, not that case, that issue has um, been closed and we have linked to that model where we've got the new updated information. Now, lastly, let's go and viewing these, these changes. So now I'm in the design coordination space. Now, this design coordination space, not the Reddit group sharing part, but this design coordination space is also part of BIM Collaborate. And here I'm doing that change visualization. I can see, okay, cool, they've changed something here. If I select on that, it is our, it's orange or yellow, so it means it's been modified. And I can see the date between the one and the other. That is green, so, so that has been newly, um, newly added. I can turn off added if I only want to have a look at modified or if I only want to look at added. And again, I can see what's the difference between what happened on Wednesday and what happened on Friday. You can see Neuron's a very efficient structural engineer because she updated all of this, you know, in, in only a day. So that just makes it easier for you to go, okay, it has been changed. Um, and then again, if you publish this in a package, you might have uh, sheets and other um, drawings that will also support that change for you. Great issue reports. This is something that I find the project managers tend to like quite a lot. Um, issue reports and issue reports aren't just for coordination reports. It can be for any type. Um, it can be for any type of issue action. So. Firstly, you can go and create a report. These reports are only created by project admins, um, but it can be viewed by all project members. It can be exported to PDF, Excel. Um, it's quite nice that you can run the template. So if you have an ongoing report that says, show me all, um, show me all issues that are overdue or show me all issues that need to be um, you know, attended to this week, I can do that and I can schedule this, this report. This is something that we've done on a lot of projects before to go send a report of all open 
um, coordination issues the day before the coordination meeting and just email it to everyone. So if they forget to go and actually have a look on ACC, they will get um, an email. You can also share this report to um, just email it straight out if you don't want it scheduled, if you just want it once off. So just in summary, before we use our last 15 minutes to have a look at Autodesk Build, we know that there's a bunch of challenges in the space. Jackie's mentioned some of this. Um, and then mentioned something something around this. A lot of bottlenecks when it comes to coordination, where you're kind of going, I can't make change, my change because I'm waiting for this one and this one is waiting for that one. Those types of things, just disconnected workflows. I think what what happens a lot, whether you are, you know, just an old kind of Boom360 um docs user or Dropbox, whatever, you know, you waste a lot of time on that upload, download, upload, download process, um, which is which is quite time consuming and it is a little bit of uh, manual work. And then there's a lot of project visibility around that. I always say it's centrally stored but selectively shared. So although there's a lot of visibility and transparency, it still doesn't mean that you know structural engineer can see everything that's going on in the office. You still get to decide when you're sharing something um, with him. So automatic cache detection, this is amazing. Um, to me, it makes it a little bit easier than Navis works because it's easier to manage and, and maintain. And then that fact that you can do all of your um, design changes, visibility, and actually view it and get a better understanding of what, you know, what these issues actually look like. It's on a common data environment. Um, and then we've got our issue management. Now, Aline mentioned earlier the three C's of, um, you know, successful digital project um, being collaboration, communication, and coordination. And this is what Autodesk Construction Cloud aims to improve on projects. But I think the fourth C that kind of holds all of this together is a common data environment. Because if you don't have a common data environment and one central source of truth, um, it's going to be a little bit tricky to have all of this. Something just to mention around common data environment, um, Autodesk Construction Cloud is working towards um, becoming fully ISO 19 650 compliant probably within the next quarter or so. Although it can support ISO 19650, it's, it's working towards becoming 100% compliant if that is something that you want to use. Great, okay, last but definitely not least, Autodesk Build. And I say unified platform because um, a BIM 360 build is on the old BIM 360 platform and then Autodesk Build is um, on the unified platform or on Autodesk Construction Cloud. Now we're mainly going to have a look at the project and field management in this case. Again, same kind of challenges in construction, um, schedules, definitely siloed information. Jackie mentioned that most contractors and teams kind of need to use like five different pieces of technology just to get one thing done. Um, and then teams are all over. We've worked on a couple of projects where kind of like everyone is sitting in South Africa, but they're building in Nigeria and they've got a Nigerian-based contractor. So that certainly makes it a little bit um, a little bit tricky. How can we fix this single source of truth? If you have multiple sources of truth, it means that four of them, if you have five sources of truth, four of them are incorrect and one is correct. The problem is you don't know which one. I think a big thing also in overcoming these types of challenges is connecting the 2D and the 3D experience because traditionally in construction, we're all very used to, here's my piece of paper, it's 2D, I understand it, I do what I have to with it. And then if we just give a 3D model, you know, some might go, it's fine, I don't need that, I'm used to working on 2D, but connecting those two things and standardizing things and making sure that everything actually um, is quite accurate. Just to mention this one more time, BIM 360 field became BIM 360 build, and we now have Autodesk build. Now, you might think, oh, okay, Autodesk build, and if you are a plan grid user, if you, or if you've heard about plan grid, the adoption in South Africa for plan grid um, at least in my opinion, wasn't as high as BIM 360 Gold, but you might think, oh, okay, so, you know, these two equal Autodesk Gold. Not the case. <laughs> um, plan Grid, still available. BIM 360 Gold, if you are on a BIM 360 Gold project, you can stay on that BIM 360 Gold project, and it is still going to, to run. But what Autodesk Build is, is it's kind of taking the best of BIM 360 Build and the best of Plan Grid and combining those two into Autodesk Build on the Unified platform. Just looking a little bit at the, the capabilities in here, so document management, you'll find document management under all the products that always sits there. Cost management, this is um, probably new if you are familiar with BIM 360 Build, you might not have seen cost management. 
um, project management, quality, safety, and then some features and functionalities around project closeout. So let's just start off by having a look at document management. I mean, touched on document management before because it is the foundation of the Autodesk Construction Cloud platform where we can look at our document control, document approvals, and document versioning. Very similar to Google 360 Docs, Autodesk Docs. And um, so if you've used the one, this might not look completely new to you. So from a document control point of view, we've seen, and I'm just also showing this before, we've seen our folder structures. Now they've changed the folder structure. It's no longer project files and plans, but we now have all the field and project files. Again, we can go and change the permissions, slight changes in permissions also. If you're used to BIM 360 build, you'll see that this is a little bit different. You can share either um, folders or files to non-project members. Um, this will be sent via an email link. And um, you can also go and create transmittals similar to the BIM 360 platform. That transmittal is formal notification of, hey, I've just sent something to you. Um, and the search functionality in here changes quite a bit because we can filter by show me submittals, show me folders, show me things that are in PDF, show me things that are in Excel, show me things that has this attached to the name. Everything that you see in for the field is also available on mobile. So if you are using the mobile app, and in this case, it's actually the planned mobile group, you'll see that um, for the field there. Document versioning, um, if you're not familiar with either ACC or BIM 360 build, document versioning happens automatically. Uh, if you have permissions, you can see the document history and switch back, um, but your document versioning in this isn't there. And like I've mentioned before, even if you're not in the Collaborate space, you can still go and compare two different versions to see what has been added, what's been new. Approval workflows. This is something that I think is a little bit underutilized because I think the power of approval workflows is extreme. Different types of workflows. So in this case, we've got one person kicking it off, a group of people reviewing it, and then someone approving it. Set up who can review it, who needs to approve it, and go and save that, that workflow or that template. Now, if I've got a set of drawings, I can select those drawings or any document for that matter and say, this needs to go to the drawing revision review, um, assign it to a couple of people who I'd like to review, give them a message saying, hi, I'd like you to review this and if you are reviewing that, and if you are the person who needs to go and approve, you can go and add in markups and disapprove it or reject it or approve it with comments. Design reviews are really your issues and markups. Now, like I said, you'll hear issues all the time. If I'm viewing a document, I don't need the software for it. I can do this online. I can go and create a markup, either published or non-published. The publishing and non-publishing is a little bit easier in the new platform, but you can also go and do an issue. So here I'm assigning an issue saying, listen, actually the, the client wants um, this, this column to be covered and I can go and create that. Sheets. Sheets is something, if you use the BIM 360 platform, sheets is something new. So sheets to me, this is the things that you will typically print in an old school um, and an old school workflow. So I will go and select my, my drawings and say, I want to publish this as a sheet. I give it a name, I give it an insurance date. Now, this is similar to the plans environment in the old platform, but now it's part of sheets where I can go and use my OCR extraction to look at the title blocks and pull out information on those sheets. I can go and provide additional tags for it. So um, sheet number, sheet name, here we can see there are a bunch of different tags. And then this is in our sheets environment. You can reorganize how you're seeing it and how you're filtering it. Also um, available on mobile. If you look at the mobile device that we have here, um, here I'll have all of my sheets. I can see um, if I want to go and click on a, in a section, it is hyperlinked. It takes me to that sheet where I have that section. Now your markups and your linking become very useful in this because I can go and link a markup to a non-conform in a checklist or to an RFI or to an issue. So those markups in our sheets environment become very useful. Again, if you're unsure about sheets, similar to the plans functionality in BIM 360 build, but sheets in um, the ACC environment is the equivalent to what you would typically go and print and hand over at the site office. 
Then let's quickly have a look at project management. So this is really our RFI submittals, meeting minutes, and daily reports. Um, some new and improved functionality, something slightly different. I do quite like what they've done with daily reports. So from an RFI point of view, all of your RFIs can be managed in one point and they can be linked to other activities. So when you go and create a new RFI, give the details, add in your question of the information that you want and give a suggested answer. Here you can see you can add references, potential change order, that's new, um, sheets, issues and so forth. Very useful on mobile because you can create it on mobile as if you're out on site and you want to create a um, and you can add an RFI, you can do that. Once you've submitted it, um, you'll get your email, similar to what I mean, has to do with public packaging, and now you can go and connect it. So I can create an issue with an RFI, or I can link an RFI to an issue so that we can always see where it came from. And if it has a cost implication, you can go and create a potential change order right from that RFI. Um, and this just makes it easier for your project teams to really check where these changes or change orders are coming from. Submittals, these are your shop drawing approvals, um, spec approvals, those types of things. You do have a submittal log and a submittal space where you can go and create new items. You can either use an existing spec section or create a new one, so fire extinguishers in this case, put in all the information, attach files, and then create that. Now, you might have um, someone part of the contracting team who needs to go and re review this so they can add, you know, here's the extra spec sheets and extra documents about this submittal before we go and actually submit it. You can select more than one participant or more than one people who you want to go and review that. Again, uh, you'll get that um, email notification and you can review it and give it an approval status. Once you've approved that shop drawing or that spec, you can go and say, okay, we're all happy with this, let's go and submit it and share it with everyone. If it's shared, it's available to everyone and it's on your homepage under um, recent activity. Again, this is very useful on mobile. So if you're out in the field and you want to have a look at everything that's been closed and approved, you can do that from your iPad or from your phone. Meeting minutes. A lot of people don't do this. I think this is wonderful. All of your meeting minutes um, can be created and you can have visibility on commitments and who needs to do what and have all of that organized. So when you start, any project member can actually create this and you can go and create a meeting and add your invitees and first off it will be like your agenda. It links to Zoom, doesn't really link to Teams although you can put in your, your Teams link and you can go and add all of your meeting topics. This I think is actually new if you use to BIM 360. Um, you can link references to that. So if there's a file or a sheet or an RFI or something that you want to link so that these items on the agenda um, is a little bit easier to understand. And then whilst you're in the meeting, you can go and tick who's actually attended. You can go and go, okay, I want to assign this to someone, give them um, that, that time. And if there are things that's outstanding, create your follow-up meeting and anything that was unresolved from the first meeting will link to the next. Again, on mobile, you can go and view that. So if, you, you know, if you're on site, you go, oh, I need to get back to the office and have a meeting, can't remember the meeting minutes, have a look on your field. So daily reports. Daily reports sits under forms in ACC, unlike a separate functionality in BIM 360 Build. And here you can go and actually customize the template. Great, if you're used to daily logs on the old, you'll see that this is really improved. Create your desired daily report. You can still add whether in your work log, you can change things around. Um, and once that template is complete, everyone can now go and use that. Again, you can do it on mobile. You go to that form, which is your daily log form, and um, that has been customized. If it had weather in, it will automatically pick up weather, but I know that sometimes you do want to go and put notes. But now you can log your labor, your um, material, you can log your equipment. Um, so there's quite a lot of things that you can customize in this template. Put in your photos if you want to take specific photos and then submit that report. The activity log is quite nice because if you're updating this in terms of what is happening on the site in the morning, this is what is happening on the site 
um, over lunchtime in the afternoon, you can have that activity log and then also you can go and export that. So for me, the um, functionality here has really improved quite a lot from what we used to see in the 360 build. Okay, second to last, um, connected cost management. So there's quite a lot of things that you can do around um, costing, and I know that this is probably something that is more useful to the QAs and the and um, your project manager and sometimes the contractor than it might be to some of the professional team that we have um, attending today. So importing budgets um, and different templates, you can either use their templates or you can go and create uh, your own template. Um, you can have multiple type of contracts, so your prime contract um, or other types of contracts, and then view that in specific orders, um, specific dates, and everything that you would in your normal budget. But this is now linked to everything else on the BIM G60 uh, on the ACC platform. I've mentioned change orders and the fact that you can create a potential change order from an RFI. So that is one of the key things that stands out. Um, here you can see where a potential change order comes from and you can also go and add that into your budget and other things like owner and supplier change orders can also be created submitted and approved um, on the cost module let me just skip that your quality management but this also ties into safety management because this, this is really where we start talking about those checklists so whether it is punch list snagging quality safety checks there's a variety of different things that you can use in this space. Now, it is now in um, ACC, it's called forms, and these forms, you can build a new form or you can create an existing form and building the new form and this functionality has quite a lot of customization around this. So these checklists um, you can then also use to automatically create issues if something is unconforming. So this kind of speeds up some of that manual work. So if you're looking at something, you go, no, this is not right, it will automatically create an issue for you. Again, this is something that, use, that works very well on mobile device, Android, iOS, um, tablet or, or phone. You can go and take photos and add more details to that specific checklist or to that specific form that you are completing. All of, this, all of these types of issues that we've spoken about do provide quite a lot of insight because you can see what's the status, what's the type, who it's assigned to, what's the root cause, um, all of those different types of things. And all of the insight really comes together in the insight module. The insight module is not um, new to ACC. It used to be at Build360 as well, but to me, it's very underutilized. Um, your dashboard looks a little bit different. If you're used to um, Build360, you'll see that this dashboard looks more like the tablet dashboard, but still a lot of useful information. And these dashboards can be customized. So. You can either look at one specific project, or if you're an owner and you're running multiple different projects, you can look at all of your different projects. Um, there's quite a lot of actionable items that you can gain visibility into and make better decisions around where do I need to focus, where do I need to follow up first, and just overall, um, how's your project progressing and where are things um, perhaps falling behind. Construction IQ. So construction IQ kind of builds on the dashboards and, and, and the insights. And this is where it uses machine learning to scan the project for issues, RFIs, design errors that might be high risk. So this picks up, oh, you know, there's a lot of things in this category, which is either overdue or it's got the same root cause or something's, something's not right here. So here you can see actually there's one high risk design coordination issue um, or there's there's some code compliance things coming out. It just basically makes it easier for you to get a sense of where do you need to focus and what's really happening on the project. So to summarize all of that, um, from a unified platform point of view, it is a unified framework. This is why um, the ACC platform and the products that we've shown you today is called the unified platform or it's construction cloud. It is built for scale. So similarly, you don't really have any data limits um, or any folders or model limits you can upload as lot of, uh, as much as you want. I do think in a lot of cases um, between BIM 360 and ACC, it's it's very simple and user friendly. Some things are more user friendly in um, in the in the ACC platform, at least in my opinion. And again, works on mobile um, if you're out in the field. And this is um, our summary of construction cloud. We could probably keep you. I see I'm really over time, so I could probably 
continue talking about this um, for days and days. But um, I want to just before we close out, just quickly stop for questions. If you're still here and you kind of listen to all of us talk for an hour and a half, um, I hope that you have some questions for us. I'm looking over to my question box here. Okay. One, um, one question that um, pops up quite a lot, and I actually got this um, yesterday, is around Autodesk Build and how does the licensing work? I've heard something about sheets. So Autodesk Build licensing works in three different sheet, sheet packs. You get a 550 sheets, a 5000 sheets, and then an unlimited sheet. So sheets, like I've shown you, it's the things that you go and publish and then actually print. So a 550 um, or a 550 sheets would mean that you have access to everything that I've kind of shown you um, today in my section, not necessarily in, in the collaborative coordinate part, but you can only view 550 sheets. Doesn't mean that you can't, doesn't mean you can only view 550 models or joins or folders. It just means that imagine sheets were actual printed documents. You can only have a stack of 500 printed documents and then 5,000 and um, unlimited. And then you probably have better visibility into that question box. Is there anything else that's popped up? No, no. I've been right. looking at it, but there's no other questions now. So either everyone's kind of blown away and we've answered all of their <laughs> questions or, you know, someone's probably still thinking about it. But in the interest of time, um, we will stick around for a couple of minutes um, after closing if you want to ask anything else. So just in closing, and, and I wanted to keep this really brief, is if you have looked at all of this and you're wondering, okay, well, where do I start? This looks interesting. Two main ways, I mean, there's a variety of ways that we can help you, but two main ways that we can help you. First, if you are an AEC uh, collection user, um, you automatically have access to Autodesk Docs because it's now included in your AEC collection, and you're not sure where to get started or how to use it, because some of what we've shown today will be available to you. We have a Autodesk um, Docs Kickstarter. It's basically a small, um, quick, easy, uh, consulting work from our side that helps you get your folder set up, get you a little bit of quick training, give you some guidance, um, kind of like a half day, really affordable um, uh, piece of work if you want to get started with that. Then on the biggest side of things, if you have a new project starting soon or if you're looking at all of this going, this is useful, but I have a question, what about this? My contract is asking me this, my queue is asking me this, the developer is asking me this. How many people do we have? What's the licensing like? You know, how will we run all of this? Please do, please get in contact with us. This is probably something that I get the biggest kick out uh, out of is, is helping um, people run this on projects and making sure that what that project needs is what we can um, can give to can give to them. So if you have a new project or if you've got questions about how does it work you know what's the costing like what's the functionality like if i have this can i do that um please do let us know great other ways that we can help you i've mentioned our consulting methodology and our consulting methodology is um our iodoc methodology which really is around you know how can we help you implement um a digital strategy so if your digital strategy is i want no one to work or service anymore. Everything needs to be digital. I want to cut out paper. Right? We can help you with that. Um, if you're not sure where you want to go, um, we can help you with that. Different types of business processes. So if you're looking at, you know, you're usually the principal agent or, or the principal consultant and you do a lot of coordination and you want help to optimize that process, um, it is something that can be done by using our consulting methodology. It goes far beyond the CAD environment. Um, so I find myself a lot talking to developers and, and owners and QSs and project managers around um, how best to manage information and information flow on their projects. Great, everyone, I'm 10 minutes late, but if, if you know me personally, you'll know that it's nothing new. If you are not sure where to contact us and how to get a hold of us, uh, you can phone us, our number's on the screen, you can email um, our support desk if you're an existing customer and you want support, 
or alternatively info at Baker Baines if you just want to get in touch. We are on all social media platforms and if what you've seen today looks interesting and you want to show it to a boss, your colleague, your um, partner, someone else that you work with, the session is recorded and will be just edited slightly and uploaded to our YouTube page by next week. Great. Thank you very much for, for joining this morning. I hope that it was um, insightful and that you've seen something new. I'm going to go on mute, but we will stay online for two minutes longer if anyone has any questions. But have a nice weekend, all. Yoni, um, I saw a comment by Sarah Troy. Tr um, yes. Maybe we can just, I don't know if she wants to stay on and just discuss it maybe. Uh, she said um, it, too, much, uh, too much to take in all the functionality. We are only using a fraction of what is possible. Uh, it will take us a huge leap to start a project on all the functionality. Mm. Um, Sarah, I know Sarah, Jackie also knows Sarah, so we'll give Sarah a call, but to, yeah. to tell you what, what, Sarah, um, what Sarah said, and I, and I had this in a presentation earlier this week, is if you look at this, it's, it's like, how do I eat an elephant? Well, bite for bite. And our Baker Brain Bain's approach is don't jump in the deep end, we'll take it step by step. You don't need to embrace all the functionality, go, oh, new project, let's do everything. Take it step by step and start with what is um, a priority for you and start with where you'll get the biggest return. And if you're not sure where to start, that is why we are here, because we can help you kind of um, plan those steps in terms of ultimately, you know, two, three years getting to a full digital um, workflow similar to what you've shown before. Thanks for that, Amin. Sure. Great. I see some of our attendees have already left. They're probably on to other things. So I'm going to bring it to a close. Again, thank you everyone for joining us um, and feel free to get in contact with us if you have any other questions. And then you can close us out and finish this webinar. Thanks, Yoni, um, and have a good weekend, everyone.